Hello people of YouTube, Deepak here, back in DCS World 1.2.16, the latest release, and uh, sitting here in the VEAO Hawk. Wasn't that nice. Um, yes, this is the updated version of the VEAO Hawk, which is now available directly through the module manager in DCS World which makes everything just a little bit simpler. And also it's had uh, a few small updates. Uh, well, firstly, obviously, they've overcome all of their problems with the copy protection, uh, hence why they've now been able to put it inside the module manager. Also, we've got some updates to the cockpit texturing. As you may have noticed, everything's looking just that little bit nicer. Uh, we still don't have radios implemented yet, uh, so that's one missing feature. Uh, also, there are more liveries and there's been some tuning of the flight model, uh, although it does, uh, at this stage, of course, remain simplified. So, uh, due to all of this, I thought I would jump in, have another look, and, um, you know, take her up for a spin. Let's jump to the outside first, though. I've chosen a particularly striking Red Arrows livery here. It's looking very, very nice indeed, and uh, our little... Chappie in the front seat uh, is even wearing red overalls. Still, I think that this is a just a stunning looking aircraft in DCS world. Uh, it's just so nicely modelled um, and the deliveries are very nice as well. So, rather than just gawking at the thing, uh, let's actually do a startup because I've never actually demonstrated a startup in this aircraft and you know, with it being a training aircraft it is pretty simple. So for starters let's turn on ignition, turn on batteries 1 and 2 and at this stage our, our lights come on. Let's cancel our attention getters and run the caution and warning panel through a test to make sure the bulbs are all okay. They are. We cancel that again. Uh, we're now going to close the canopy. Thunk, and we push this lever here, and we put the safety on, and that's it all closed up. Things are quite quiet in this cockpit once you've got it closed. Um, okay, so at this stage we are going to turn on the fuel, we're going to turn on the engine master switch, we're going to turn on the fuel pump and we're going to hit the uh, engine relight switch which will spin up our GTS. Okay, That's going to take a few seconds to run after which we will have a green GTS light which I think stands for gas turbine starter but I'm not 100% sure. There we go we have a green light. Okay at this stage we flick our engine master switch to start and it uh, springs back to the middle position. We watch engine RPM and uh, we're hanging by until we get 15% uh, on the, the RPM gauge here, which is about now, uh, at which stage we will move the throttle lever into the idle position. And we should, after a few moments, get light. There we go, we've got exhaust temperature rising, RPM rising. I think this big chappy is ahead of us in the in the queue. Hey, where are you guys going? Interesting. Oh well. Why is he standing right in front of me now? Anyway, um, so at this stage all of the lights are out apart from hydraulic 2. Uh, what we need to do is just advance the throttle a little bit and then hit the reset for Hydraulic 2 and it should... Yep, there we go, we're starting to get pressure in Hydraulic 2 rising. Bloody Humvee in my way now. There we go, warning light has gone out. Okay, so at this stage we are going to switch uh, our, whatever this switch is, AHARS, uh, into, into slave mode and uh, this will take around about three minutes to actually align uh, and give us our flight instruments and uh, and whatnot. So in the meantime, let's turn on our lights and uh, oh, I've got a message and <laughs> enjoy the aircraft from the outside. So nav lights, anti-collision lights, 
and uh, we'll pop on the taxi light just now as well because we'll be taxiing soon. There we go. Oh, someone's flying off in the distance there. Isn't she a beauty? And DCS World showing off its very nice lighting effects. Ooh, are there some F-16s over there? Very nice. I'm guessing those pylons are not supposed to be orange. It's perhaps a missing texture somewhere. But uh, that's to be expected. This is uh, still a beta. We're, uh, we're out of the pre-release stage now into beta. Uh, but, you know, still work to be done. Uh, although, at the present time, this is still a very enjoyable aircraft. I've actually flown it online a few times, and i found it very fun uh, in the close air support role, with that, that cannon and the uh, rocket pods being most effective. Okay, so just going to push to synchronise our compass. We should get a heading of uh, 130, I think. Approximately. There we go, that looks not too bad. Uh, I'm also going to uh, align my old-fashioned card compass. And figure out how to. Uh, oh, oh, there we go, just about. There, that will act as a reference in case our ARs goes down. Okay, probably still looking at about a minute or so before that's uh, fully aligned, so I'm afraid you're just going to have to listen to me natter on for a little bit longer. Just having a look around to see what texture updates they've made. It does actually, it's amazing the difference it makes just having little scratches and, and details, even in these sort of inconspicuous areas, because uh, it makes it all look just so much more real in 3D. Turn on my uh, turn on my anti skid. Shouldn't forget about that. In the meantime, let's pop our flaps down into the middle takeoff position. Oh, the flags are gone. Okay, right. This looks like actually yes. At this stage, we're aligned. Okay, that's good. So we are good to taxi now. Uh, with the radio is not being implemented yet, uh, I don't have to ask for permission because I can't. Uh, so you know. As it is, we're just going to go. Is that big chappy already taken off? Oh no, there he is, on his takeoff roll right now. So, anyway, we'll get rolling and uh, line up. I'm not going to use the whole runway, actually. I'm just going to start at this taxiway here. Because the, the Hawk's pretty, pretty good at taking off, doesn't need such a long roll. Okay. Quick test of the brakes. They're working. As we turned, I saw our compass move in the correct direction. Yep, and they're both aligned, so that's good. Oh, we have a wingman following us out. Always look both ways before entering a runway. Okay, and we're aligned, full throttle, let's get rolling. Let's see if there are any delights in the updated flight model for us to enjoy. Okay, rotate and airborne. gear up, and we're going flaps up. Okay, so I'm just going to climb along runway heading just now. I like the animation of the numbers on the altimeters. They seem very smooth. It's nice little details like that. Makes all the difference. OK, 
Okay, so approaching 5,000. Going to level off here and build up some speed, and we'll come back around to uh, take a look at the runway. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's try some manoeuvres. I'm going to trade some height for speed now and then see if we can do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Just over 300 knots, that should do the trick. Let's not pull too hard into a nice gentle loop. And actually let's go all the way around and return to the same heading again. Okay, that was nice, that handled all right. Roll rate seems pretty good. Let's try some combat turns. Oh, okay, I think we're reaching the limit there. Let's level out and uh, gain some speed again. So yeah, pretty docile. Yeah, I, you know, I imagine pretty much what you would expect from a training aircraft. Uh, it's not likely to bite you too hard. So, I think I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. This has been a quick look at the VEAO Hawk in DCS World 1.2.16. Um, still very much enjoying this module and uh, looking forward to the, the uh, updates to come. Okay, see you all later. Bye.